The jubilant sound of the organ at First Baptist Church in the season of Easter. Hallelujah. It is the 50-day season of Easter. And so Christians who follow the liturgical calendar or the Christian calendar get to celebrate the risen Christ for 50 days. So happy eighth day, everybody. Jesus is still risen. (laughs) Still risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome. We're glad that you're with us here in the sanctuary. Many of us, uh, many of you join a live stream or in the days ahead as we worship together. And so know that you are welcome to First Baptist Church Edmonton. There are yellow uh, communication cards in the pew racks in front of you. If you want to communicate with ministry staff or church council, you can fill out one of those forms and drop it in the offering plate as it comes around later in the service. It's Communion Sunday today, um, but not Intergenerational Sunday. Sometimes our Communion Sundays line up as Intergenerational Sundays, where we keep the children with us in the sanctuary, but today is not one of those days, so heads up and plan accordingly. Um, On Communion Sundays, we also uh, take a special Communion offering, and again, in the pew racks in front of you, there are colored Uh, neon tags on brown envelopes if you want to give a special communion offering uh, with or in addition to your tithes and offering uh, that's available for you as well and our communion offering this month is for the friends of Fox Lake I'm going to invite Brian Wurzba Tanya's husband up to talk more about this partnership thanks yeah I'm definitely not Tanya uh, but I'm going to read what she wrote so Uh, Tanse, I'm sorry that I'm not here with you this morning because I'm on a flight to Fox Lake. Fox Lake is one of the three communities that make up the Little Red River Cree Nation, the others being John Door Prairie and Garden River. Our team has been serving this nation for over three years now. Catherine is a speech and language pathologist, Carrie is an occupational therapist, and Tanya is the physiotherapist. They are funded through Jordan's principal and see children uh, from birth to age 18 at the nursing station, home visits, daycare, Head Start, and in the schools. Some of the children have diagnoses such as cerebral palsy and autism. Some have needs due to health conditions such as meningitis, syphilis, and other birth injuries. And some have developmental needs due to poor health, food insecurity, lack of clean water access, and housing. They meet the families and children, assess through play, coach the families and help them navigate the complex medical system. They try to attend appointments with them in Edmonton if they would like, and often see them when they are here staying in hotels uh, for medical follow-up. Catherine, Carrie, and Tanya want to tell you how much your donations have meant uh, to them and more importantly to the community members. They are used to purchase clothing, food, diapers, shoes, formula, personal hygiene items, and toys when the fires broke out last May. They have also used the funds to provide taxi vouchers to family that are in the city for appointments, for groceries, Tim Hortons gift cards, and to pay for visits to the zoo, museum, or other city attractions when the families are, when the families are visiting in Edmonton. We anticipate another fire season this year and ask for prayers for the community and for your safety, oh sorry, for their safety as they continue to travel to Fox Lake. Every trip is a bit of an adventure and makes a great difference knowing that the First Baptist family is supporting them. Thank you. Thanks, Brian. Our partnership with the Friends of Fox Lake is one way that we try to do this practical journey of reconciliation with our Indigenous neighbours and friends. First Baptist Church is located on Treaty 6 land, a traditional territory of the Cree, the Soto, the Blackfoot, the Métis, the Dene, and the Dakota Sioux. And so we acknowledge that we, as a church organization, benefit greatly from our treaties with Canada's First Nations. Looking ahead, um, if you haven't had your picture taken for the upcoming photo directory, Gordon is on the landing before and after church services 
today and next week. So if you haven't had your picture yet, please get your picture taken. Or you can email uh, Gordon a picture and his information is in news and notes, our weekly email that you can sign up at our website. We also have Rose Murky's Friendship Circle, Tuesday at 11 a.m. this week. And then next Sunday, we're going to do one more run at Romans before summer hits. And so a three-week series with Joanne Badley, who's been teaching Romans this winter for us. Um, so April 14, 21, and 28, 9.30 a.m., Church Chapel, Romans 9 to chapter 11, if you want to read ahead. Uh, also letting you know what's going on with ministry staff these days. Uh, Jeremy, our associate minister of youth and young adults and outreach, is going to a Baptist Alliance conference in North Carolina next weekend. And so you may want to ask him what that means. And then for some of you who may not know, Jeremy starts his sabbatical last week of April. And so a four-month sabbatical that goes into September. And so um, he'll preach today. He'll preach a couple weeks from then. And uh, then he'll be in a season of sabbatical. Um, Evelyn wants to point you to the June Choral Music con Concert that's here at the church. And if you want to bring your musical or instrumental or vocal gifts, please contact Evelyn. Um, you may have noticed that our children's ministry is growing, and so Don has been thinking and wondering about if there are volunteers who might work with her in children's ministry. That's a fairly simple application process and also getting a police check done. So Don um, would love to have a conversation with you if you're interested in that. I think that covers it. Let's continue to prepare our hearts for worship. I'll invite you to simply breathe, slow down, do not rush. You've arrived here in this sanctuary, and we pray that it would be a place of well-being and peace for you. Amidst our doubts and fears, Jesus says, 
Peace be with you. In our turmoil and distress, Jesus says, peace be with you. In our midst, Christ has breathed the Spirit upon us, sending us out with love, courage, and wisdom. Please pray with me. Living and loving God, through the raising of your son Jesus from the grave, you indeed broke the power of death. And so, Lord, we pray that you would raise us up, renew us, reorient us, resurrect in our lives faith, hope, and love. And lead us with your mercies, even as we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. 
Amen. Please pray this morning's prayer of confession with me. Living God, all too often we get caught up in the busyness of ourselves. We miss the joy and life of every day and remain stuck in our own darkness. Our lack of faith makes it difficult to let you work in our lives. We close our hearts to your spirit of love, compassion, and forgiveness, and let our doubts and fears take over. Let it be known that your love is greater than all else and can overcome our darkness and fulfill us with your eternal light. Thank you, God, for your humility and pain that allows us to live fully again. Help us to keep our hearts, minds, and bodies open to your love and light. Be assured, we are forgiven.
Our first scripture reading of this morning is drawn from 1 John, beginning in verse 1 of chapter 1 and concluding with chapter 2, verse 2. We declare to you what was from the beginning, what we've heard, what we've seen with our eyes, what we've looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life. This life was revealed and we've seen it and testify to it and declare to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. We declare to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. And truly, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him there is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him while we're walking in darkness, we lie and do not do what is true. But if we walk in the light as he himself is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. And he is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Any of my friends want to come join me on the steps today? I see lots of you out there today. So I would love to have you come down if you want to. Hello. Hi. Oh, 
welcome. We're so glad to see you all this morning. <laughs> Hi, thanks. You want to come in? Okay. This morning, in the New Testament passage that Teresa is about to read in a moment, it talks about Jesus coming to the disciples, and the disciples were hiding in a locked room because they were scared. Now, Jesus' first words to them were, peace be with you, which I think sometimes is easier said than done. When we're scared, is it super easy to go from being scared to being peaceful right away? It isn't for me. Maybe it is for you. For me, it takes a little while. The word peace comes from the word airo, which means to join or to gather together into wholeness, to join or tie together into wholeness. And I would like us to practice this morning joining our thoughts into wholeness or peace by prayer. So let's get comfortable. It's going to be a a meditation prayer. Let's get comfortable sitting down, and you can put your hands in your lap if you want to, or you can put your hands on your heart if you want to. And grown-ups, we would ask that you would do this with us too. So you can either rest your hands in your lap or on your heart. And let's close our eyes. Let's close our eyes and settle in to our seat and take some big, deep breaths. Let's breathe in and breathe out. And let's breathe in and breathe out and breathe in and breathe out. And now I would like you to repeat after me. First of all, before you repeat after me, I'd like you to think of someone that you love. With your eyes closed, picture that person in your head, that person that you love, and you're going to repeat some words after me to pray for that person. So this is, this is our first prayer that I ask you to repeat after me. May God's peace be with you. May God's peace be with you. May God's love surround you. May God's love surround you. May your heart be full of love. May your heart be full of love. Now I would like us to picture in our mind peace to the children who are around the world, especially those children who are living in scary places right now. Let's do a prayer for them. So you can repeat after me. May God's peace be with them. May God's peace be with them. May God's love surround them. May God's love surround them. May their hearts be full. May their hearts be full. And because it is good for us to be as kind to ourselves as it is to our friends, we'll pray for peace for ourselves. Repeat after me. May God's peace be with me. May God's peace be with me. May God's love surround me. May God's love surround me. May my heart be full. May my heart be full. Amen. Thank you. Let's go downstairs now.
Today's second reading is John 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. Back in 2017, I was with Alan Effa in Spain, of all places. And while we were there, we took a day to visit one of the world's most famous churches in the city of Barcelona. It was an absolutely radiant, sunny day. And of course, Alan had weeks ahead, pre-booked a ticket for a tour of and Tony Gaudi's architectural wonder, La Sagrada Familia. Is anyone familiar with that church? I, of course the architect is. I brought a little photo of it. Is it if we could pass this around if we were feeling. There's a reason why this is just such an astonishingly famous and wild mega church project. And it's a wonder of elegance and genius. And like a lot of famous buildings, you kind of need to see it in person to understand it. As it happened, a big oopsie daisy on my part, I hadn't purchased a ticket and uh, La Sagrada Familia does not accept walk-ins. And so while Alan was in the tour, I found myself a bench in the park across the way. And I sat for a while in the gravity well of that colossal structure. And I watched tourist buses and birds and neighborhood families in the playground with this beautiful church as a backdrop. And I thought to myself, do these locals take for granted the thing that's just behind them? Or do they look upon it with wonder every single day? I also quite earnestly searched that park for what I imagined was going to be Barcelona's delectable version of a hot dog stand. But alas, this was not the park for such an adventure. 
I sat and counted the construction cranes postured around the spires of this massive project because it's still under construction since 1883. Gaudi's jewel of Barcelona is truly a marvel. The whole city marked by the beauty and the audacity of La Sagrada Familia. And, as it happens, you'll have to ask Alan <laughs> what it was like on the inside. On May 19th, just six weeks to go in the season of Easter, churches around the world are going to celebrate the day of Pentecost. And of, as Ryan's already told you, I'm not going to be here for that. But I can imagine that with a little bit of whimsy and imagination, there's a good chance that you will hear someone, maybe during the children's time, maybe it'll be Ryan or Dawn, they're going to make mention of Pentecost as the church's birthday. And if you read the book of Luke and the book of Acts, they seem pretty clear on this. Celebrating the day of the Spirit's arrival at Pentecost, opening the whole world the start of a whole new way of living for the disciples and beyond. And I would say, if you're going to use the B word on Pentecost, it only stands to reason that there be cake in the narthex with the tea and the coffee. Ice cream. Cake and ice cream, even. Just my two bits, since I'm not in charge of any of that. That being said, as fun as this is, it's not like there's a big day marked for biblical birthdays. And we're not in the book of Acts today, or the book of Luke. We're traveling in the gospel according to John today. And among the gospels, the book of John has its own unique way of viewing things, its own way of framing the telling of the Jesus story. And if you're looking for a birthday for the church, as far as John's gospel is concerned, I think you could make a pretty good case for today's text from John 20. These were the first wobbly days for the first of all the first churches, the first church in Jerusalem. Ever since that first church in Jerusalem, every single local church has had to choose its path planned out and debated and discerned in community, sometimes bullied and manipulated, often brave and prophetic, sometimes tragic, at times navigating difficult twists and shocking turns of history, monarchs and martyrs and plagues and famine and movements of humanity across the globe. At times the church has been completely bought and paid for, by cynical powers. Even while other communities have suffered in the name of simplicity and peace and humble service. The church is built by action and practice, framed and organized in creed and doctrine and theological positions and bylaws and identity statements and constitutions and terms of association as we know so well. The church is always traveling and expanding, giving its money away, and sometimes hoarding it, taking up space, buying real estate, building projects that are practical and reliable or ostentatious and proud. Churches in desperate slums, churches in elegant parlors in fine neighborhoods, Grand cathedrals, living rooms, tiny country chapels, rental space in a strip mall. Every local congregation gives shape to their own way of following Jesus, of being the church in the world. When the church is wild in the world, it stands in the midst with all the folks in need Or, tragically, the church can set itself apart, isolate itself, build walls and fences. These choices are always our choices in every age. 
We can be disciples speaking words of hope, or we can sit in troubled silence. Sometimes we negotiate reasonable compromises, and other times we stand firm on non-negotiables. All of this has been a lot, and it's still a lot, being the 21st century church. But before churches were any of these things, the first church of Jerusalem was a locked house. A locked house with some scared disciples huddled together in it. That is, until they had an encounter with the risen Christ who changed absolutely everything. To be fair, these disciples were afraid and not without good reason. They had just witnessed horrors and were still recovering from the shock of it all. It was a dangerous time to be associated with that infamous Galilean revolutionary And the city would have been still hot and thirsty. Ready maybe for another riot or a public flogging. Perhaps another holy mob of religious extremists with clubs and spears looking for any provocation to round up the leftover troublemakers. I can follow the disciples' logic. Friends, we stick out like sore thumbs. Let's just lay low until this cools down, and then when the coast is clear, we'll settle back into our lives like they were in the before times. They had heard a wild tale from Peter, and an even crazier story from Mary Magdalene, which seemed way too good to be true. And now they sat with the weight of that great So now what? Pressing down on them and hanging in the air. And then, despite those locks on the door, Jesus just stood, showed up and stood among them. With a simple greeting, peace be with you, he told those trembling hearts. And of course the disciples They went wild. And when the room had died down a second time, maybe so it could really sink in, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Go and do as I have done. Stand in the midst of the fearful and offer words of peace. And then in one of those strange Jesus moments, he breathed on them, little puffs of the Spirit, inoculating them with wisps of strength and courage and guidance and insight for the days ahead. Friends, breathe in and breathe out whole lungfuls of the Spirit. See the world with fresh eyes. Ride the currents. Inhale the breath of creation. You are made new, animated, filled, stirred, inspired. This is how I send you. With those words, Jesus would launch those disciples out into the very same dangerous world they were so afraid of. The very same hot and thirsty city with all of its risks and all of its dangers. I've been a longtime fan of the Spanish chef, uh, Jose Andres. Any fans of Jose Andres in the house? No? Fair enough. You can look him up. He's a celebrated cook and a total genius who studied culinary arts in Barcelona before he moved to New York City. And Andres is a man of such immense talent and charm and charisma. It's little wonder that wherever he goes, he leaves his mark, no matter where he finds himself in the world. And not just in the culinary world. In 2010, he founded World Central Kitchen. It's a not-for-profit which inspires an industrious team of devoted aid workers. And these are people who take risks to quickly prepare thousands and thousands of nourishing meals for desperate, hungry people 
in global hotspots and in dangerous locations around the world. Places devastated by natural disaster or torn apart by war. World Central Kitchen made the news this last week, you may have heard, when seven of their aid workers were killed by a precision bomb strike in Gaza. Friends, the work we do is important and beautiful and vital. We work for the life of the world. We've been sent by Jesus. But we should make every effort to avoid sentimentality when we speak of the church being sent out. Because the church has always served a thirsty and hungry and dangerous world of troubles. Jesus sends us out to carry the spirit of peace in places where peace has been shattered. Our expression of the church is called to stand in the midst of the world's people. And as it happens, we don't need to travel far. As a church that has chosen quite intentionally to keep its roots in the heart of the downtown core of the city, we need only open up our front doors and step outside. And there we find people we might stand with, people we might speak up for, people we can feed and clothe and care for and welcome into our midst. Who knows what practical miracles the Spirit might dream up with us as this local congregation gives shape to its own way of following Jesus in the world. As we open our hearts to these realities, as together we breathe deep, as the Spirit fills us with strength and courage and guidance and insight and creativity. What will a community of Baptists in this place in time set about to do? Folks gathered in this mid-century red brick building a community organized around the voices of a congregation, discerning together in, in meetings and on committees, dreams and schemes that we might bring to life in the days ahead. Might we dig deep as together we are inspired and creative and courageous and might we be amazed by the beauty and the audacity of it, breathing in and breathing out lungfuls of the Spirit's courage. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Thanks be to God.
been hearing all morning about peace. Peace to one another, peace to ourselves, peace from Christ. As we prepare our hearts and our bodies and our minds for communion, please pass the peace among yourselves. We say uh, the peace of Christ be with you or peace be with you, and we return that back. Peace be with you. on Communion Sunday is the reading of one of those organizing documents I was talking about, and this is one of the oldest of them all, the Apostles' Creed. You can find it in your order of service, and we'll read it together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. When we think of living this Christ life, and pouring our life out for the life of the world. Communion, the Lord's table, becomes very important and a practical part of our journey together as worshipers. And so we trust that you will feel welcome to come to the table and partake of the bread, partake of the cup, eat of Christ's body, drink of Christ's blood and love poured out for us so that we might carry Jesus into the world. Know that you are welcome. Among friends, around a table, Jesus took bread. He broke it. And he said, this is my body. It is for you. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took a cup of wine and said, this is the new relationship made possible because of my death. Take this, all of you, drink of it, and remember me. And so we say, Lord, come to us in the bread and in the cup. We believe these are the gifts of God for the people of God. We practice a come to the table communion, where we embody movement to the table. And so um, if you haven't been here before, it means we come up from the outside aisles, we have servers on the piano side and servers on the organ side of the platform who give you the bread and the cup. And then you can partake of those elements at your own timing. 
If you want to bring those elements in front of the table and stand before the table of the Lord and eat and drink, you're welcome to do that. There's not a rush. If you want to take those elements back to your pew, you'll do that by going up the middle aisle back to your pew and you can partake of the elements there. Again, there's no rush. This is the Lord's table and we will come forward and partake as the Spirit leads us. Uh, We also have elements that we can bring to you if you are not able to come forward, so I will bring those elements to you if you should desire that. We'll start with the balcony and the back pews, and then work our way forwards so that we might come to the table of our Lord. Let's pray together a blessing on the bread and the cup. Jesus, thank you for the bread and the wine. And we will receive these into our hands so that we might be the hands of Christ in the world. Risen Christ, transform us, renew us individually and corporately as the body of Christ. Bless this bread, bless these cups, Jesus, we pray that your spirit might fill us again as we participate and partake at the Lord's table. Amen.
Please pray with me. Lord Jesus, you have put your life into our hands. Now we put our lives in yours. Take us, renew us, reorient us, remake us. What we have been is past, and what we shall be through you still awaits. Lead us on. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In worship today, we do so by the giving of our tithes and our offering. It's also Communion Sunday, so those neon labeled envelopes in the pew rack in front of you are for our communion offering that's designated to the friends of Fox Lake, Tanya Wurzba and her friends who do a work in the northern part of Alberta. There are many ways to give. There's a QR code on a pink uh, paper in your pew rack that leads you to the church website. There's communion offering envelopes and regular envelopes in the pew racks. You can send donations in in many ways and forms, of course. And we're grateful for those of you who give to the work of this church, the ministry of peace and well-being in the city for over 130 years. Your gifts sustain the work of this church. Your gifts literally and we're going to raise our heads, keep the light bulbs on. And we got all the light bulbs in the chandeliers replaced this week. Yay! <laughs> yes, there is a God. So please, continue to give. Give generously. We're grateful for your gifts.
Please pray with me. Loving, generous God, we are grateful for your generosity to us so that we might be generous to the work of your church in the world. And today on this Communion Sunday, we also remember the friends of Fox Lake and the Little Red River Cree Nation. We pray for Catherine, for Carrie, and Tanya as they serve tirelessly in the months ahead. Give them grace and strength and wisdom, and we pray that the people that they serve might know of your love and your care surrounding them. Bless these gifts. Bless those who give. We pray these things in the name of the community of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Right before the words of blessing and sending, two things to note. Many of you know Karen Barkman, and she had a shoulder reconstruction surgery this past week. And so she continues to covet our prayers as she goes forward in that healing journey. If you know Karen, you know she's sent our church community a thousand creative cards in the last 20 years. And so this is a time for us to return blessings to her. Maybe it's a a text or an email or even a card in the mail could be fun for Karen Barkman. And know that you're welcome to stay. There's coffee and water and snacks in the foyer. There are coffee tables set up downstairs where if you want to sit and have coffee, there's a, a coffee pot on the table downstairs if you want to sit and relax in the fellowship hall. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Also with you. 
You've been gladdened by this people and nourished by this table, and I trust that you are inspired by the Spirit. And as you make that first step out these front doors, hear these words from Christ from John 16. I have told you these things so that you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble, but take heart. I have overcome the world. Amen.